Hello everyone, this is an AVL tutorial. Um, AVL stands for Atina Vortex Lettuce um, and is a program written by Mark Drila. My name is Benjamin Kelm and I'm gonna um, try to explain to you a few things about that program to help you to get started. So what will you learn? Um, I will split it up in a few videos. In the first video we are going to cover the basics um, and cover what AVL is useful for, um, what is, how does it work, and what are the underlying aerodynamic principles. And then later in this video we will talk about the program structure, um, where you can download it, how um, you can use it, open it, run it, and uh, what files are needed, and what test files there are uh, with which you can play around. So um, by yeah, you go to the website, just search MIT um, AVL. And you see this is the, the main page it takes a moment to load because uh, my internet is slow at the moment. So um, this is it. It's for aerodynamic analysis, trim calculation, dynamic stability analysis, and in general, um, aircraft configuration development. And you can read through um, all the features uh, which are there on this website. Um, very informative if you have the time. All right, um, just to let you know, this uh, program is um, publicly available and free and it's published under the GNU General Public License. Um, and what we want to download is first um, the big archive here um, we have a lot of um, useful data in there, a user guide, uh, sample, AVL, session inputs, and so on. So download that, that's helpful for later. And since I'm using a Mac, I'm also downloading um, the compiled file already, the compiled program, um, version 3.35. Now, before we get into AVL, the program, I would like to say something about the underlying aerodynamic principles. And for that, um, we go into a book called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics from Anderson. It's a classical work in aerodynamics. And I would like you to understand the, the basics uh, about what is happening um, in AVL. So the first thing is the bio Savard law. And that states that uh, if there's any... Um, vortex like this one a vortex filament uh, this vortex uh, filament will induce a velocity in the flow field and uh, you can calculate how they are dependent the strength of the vortex and the change in the uh, flow field if you have time uh, and you have the book you, or you buy the book you can um, read through that chapter it's very very good now, um, the classical lifting line theory from Prandtl is um, based on this thought of uh, bio -Savart. And basically what you can do is replace a wing um, with a horseshoe vortex. Horseshoe because it's formed like a horseshoe. And if you do that, um, you will be able to model uh, the aerodynamics of a wing uh, quite simply. And um, if you want uh, to change the lift across the span, which is uh, called a lift distribution, you can do that by superimposing multiple of these horseshoe vortices upon one another. And then you will end up with a lift distribution displayed here, um, which corresponds to the reality, the physical reality. This is what AVL is based on, the lifting line theory. And now to understand how you model um, this three-dimensionally, a wing, for example, in AVL, we go to a book called Flight Vehicle Dynamics from Mark Drila. He has written uh, that program, AVL and XFOIL and a few others. Now here on w page 130, uh, he starts um, to describe the vortex lattice method, uh, which AVL is based on. And you can see in that picture already that now um, we are not only discretizing in span-wise direction, but also in chord-wise direction. As you can see in the figure, um, now uh, through these 
yeah, horseshoe vortices, uh, vortices um, which uh, are put on the surface of the wing or model the surface of the, of the wing, we have a lattice, a kind of grid. What you will get in the end uh, mathematically is a big system of equations uh, which you want to solve um, so that the flow field will fulfill the tangency condition um, of the airfoil. Uh, maybe that is a bit too much uh, for the video here, so I won't go further into detail. You can read um, in those two uh, books further about it. Now we want to get into the program. So we've downloaded it already and um, now I want to show you what's inside. First we open this folder called AVL3 and in there you will find a lot of uh, useful information. The first one is a Docu document um, documentation of the program. It's quite uh, hard to read because it's just in, in TXT format, um, yet it's quite helpful and you can just search for different keywords. For example, polars, how do you import aerodynamic data or input aerodynamic data into your model and so on. So that's quite helpful if you um, need detailed information. The next one um, is source and all these things are basically, um, yeah, it's the source code, you don't need that. There's a readme, let's open that one quickly. Um, so here you can see if you want to build the program yourself on some other computer. And um, you will also have a session file and that's super useful. It's basically a session keyboard inputs um, listed uh, below and we will kind of go through one of these sessions um, in this video so you don't really need that but good to know it's there um, and where you want to go is into the runs directory you see here a lot of uh, rather familiar names um, for example the b boeing 737 uh, that's that's in there um, as a model and a lot of other uh, airplanes too a lot of model airplanes so um, let's go quickly through these files. They have different endings. The first one is the .avl file and that describes the configuration of the airplane or the geometry. So um, this is just an overview. Basically you have a header and then you have a lot of information about um, how the wing is yeah, formed. It's not that difficult. We will get into this in the second part of this video series. Then there's another file ending on .mass and that describes uh, the mass distribution um, and it also defines the units. Um, so here you see uh, G, the gravitational constant is defined, rho as the density. You might note that there's a hash key um, on in the beginning of a lot of lines that denotes a comment line. So whenever there's a hash key or an exclamation mark, um, everything behind is ignored as a comment. And below this comment section, there are all the inputs for the mass. Uh, also quite simple, you just list all the masses. And the last file format is .run. And this is a run case where you define all the different aerodynamic parameters, for example, alpha, um, the lift coefficient, CL, beta, that's the angle of side slip, um, the different rudders, uh, the different deflections of the, the control surfaces, and so on. So you can define anything in there. This is just the overview, so three files, the AVL, .mass, and .run. Now let's take a look at the program itself. We open the directory, AVL3. Um, I've removed the space in between, just so you know. And we go into the runs directory, and there we see, as I said before, a lot of different um, airplanes, and we go to the Super G. The Super G is this airplane. It was designed, and uh, this one I guess also built by Mark Driller. And uh, we have the sample inputs, input data for that one. Um, so that's very helpful. You can see on this website um, how it was built. It looks quite nice. And we are going to open that in AVL and have a look 
what you can do, basically. So let's go back to AVL. Okay, now let's try to open the Super G in AVL. For that, you need to know the absolute uh, file path for, for your AVL file. And you just type in um, a load and then you type, you put in the, the string where your file is. Let's explain here in the prompt. So you just type in a load and then um, input the, the file name, the file path, hit enter and there you have it. The program successfully read in the file and now we are ready to go. Now you can type in another question mark um, to know what options you have in that uh, menu you're in currently. And in order to go to the next menu, for example, you type in oper operate. That's the kind of main menu in AVL. And if you want to take a look at the geometry, type in G, hit enter, and then this geometry should show up. And you can see it's looks similar to the, the actual aircraft built. And if you want to change the angles, how to look at it, you can do that by typing in K and then using commands L, R, um, U and, and, and D for up, right, left, down, and so on. So that's rather simple. Um, now we have it, now it's the same, same angle. Now if you want to leave uh, that um, menu, you can do that by typing in space and then you're back in the basic geometry. Um, you can go enter and hop back to the main operating menu. And what we want to do now is do an execute a, a run case, just calculate um, the aerodynamics. So now all the systems of equations are being solved rather quickly. You see it here. The system of equations has been set up and it only needed one iteration to converge. And now uh, we can have a look. All the angles are zero here. We don't uh, trim for anything yet. So that's, that's an easy calculation. If you want to have a look at the geometry and the lift distribution, you can do that by typing in LO and then hit enter. Loading, there you have the loading, three-dimensional loading. You can again, um, yeah look at it from different angles and go back by hitting space. There is another option to look at the lift distribution and that is um, called the Treft's plane and it's very helpful um, to have a look at the lift distribution as you can see. Up there you see the aerodynamic state variables like alpha, beta, um, rates of roll, uh, coefficient of lift, of drag and so on and uh, deflections of, of the control surfaces. And below you see the different, you see the span wise lift distribution for the, the tail and also for the wing, of course. Now we want to um, input the mass distribution file. We do it the same way, but this time we don't type in load, but mass, and then we insert the file path well, here we were in the wrong menu. We need to be at the top menu, AVL. Um, so insert that and that's good. Now we also input the last file that is the run case file. Um, and you can we can have a look at it again quickly. Now you see um, that we have some inputs. For example, we want the lift um, coefficient CL uh, to be 0.6. So alpha should be, and if we go further, you can also see that uh, the velocity is set to 5.4 um, meters per second and a few other things. We don't get into detail right now. We do that in the second video, but just so you know what is in these files. So it's basically a list of the aerodynamic state or flight dynamic state variables um, like alpha, beta, um, and so on. Now we would like to input um, also the run case. Now this one is the wrong run case. Um, it's for the Supra, it's another airplane. Just skipped a line there. So this is the correct one, case, 
then input the run file and you can go into the upper menu again hit execute the program will then iterate and as you can see this time we have a few more iterations until the solution converged and you can see all the um, parameters here so indeed now we have a um, elevator deflection we wanted to trim for um, zero moments um, so you see that on the right okay so that works um, at the end I would like to show you what happens if you input um, uh, let's say aileron deflection of uh, 10 degrees no 20 degrees so I've done that quickly I will show you in the next video how to do it so we have a 20 degrees aileron deflection we calculate it and look at the lift distribution and there you see it it's very asymmetrical now let's have another look at the 3d um, option again on the geometry how it looks there and um, we also want to see if the aileron really deflected so I'm going to show you how you can see that now I've disabled the loading and there you can see if you type in CA you will have the camber um, displayed and you can see how the the whole rear of the wing is deflected by 20 degrees so that's good now suppose we want to save that result what do we do there are multiple ways to output and multiple um, levels of detail to output we would like to output the stability derivatives and that's we, we are doing this by typing st and then you type in the name um, of the file um, super g for example stability 01.txt and if you hit enter that's gonna save it to a certain place on the computer you can specify that um, for me it's the main directory and I'm gonna pull this out quickly onto the desktop so we can uh, have a look at it and if you open it um, you can see basically all the uh, top level results that is first of all how many vortices are created and so on uh, for the calculation and then stability derivatives this is very important for flight dynamic analysis and so on now if we would like to export the visuals for example a graph we can do that we go into the uh, geometry menu again and then we see there's a, a function called h or hard copy and we press that and it will copy it uh, or save it to a file uh, called plot.ps that's a postscript file you might not be able to open it um, directly so see if there's any uh, additional software you you might need um, for the trefts plane it's the same you just press h and it's gonna it, it's going to append it to that plot.ps file it's important to quit the program afterwards um, so the file is being ended properly and you can open that it's in the same directory and have a look at it um, i think those plots are quite nice um, and you can also toggle if you want to have color output or not and so on all right that concludes our first video and um, i hope that you learned uh, the basics what uh, is avl useful for we'll just do a quick recap um, we've covered that um, how does it work in principle um, we've covered covered some of the aerodynamic principles underlying uh, that program also a little bit of this program structure where you can download it open run it and especially what files are needed and how do you how you input them and then we also had a brief walkthrough um, through the program um, how you use it um, and what possibilities of export exporting data you have so thank you very much for watching and um, hopefully learning something the second video um, will be about modeling your own aircraft. So let's say you have a preliminary design and you want to input the geometry into AVL to calculate a few things. So for that we are going to go through and see how uh, an airfoil is modeled and so on. So a lot of things there. And then also the run case input file, that's rather easy and also the mass uh, input file is, is quite easy 
uh, to set up and then you will be ready for your own calculation.